Questions? Just a few. Okay. Doug Weinstein, cross-examination. Good afternoon, Agent Bernie. Good afternoon, sir. And we've spoken once or twice before. We have. And uh, I believe I told you I represent the Amante Kendrick. Yes, sir. So uh, let's talk about something other than Auburn football for okay. a moment. Please. Um, I don't know who's working the power, the machine, but could you all pull up 532Y, page five? I believe this is your kind of sector orientation and illustration slide, correct? It is. Uh, one thing I just want to try to get clarified is when we're talking about locations of the cell phone or mobile phones. So you have a sector here um, pointed north, zero degrees, correct? It is in this illustration, yeah. And in that sector, you've got these hard red lines that extend uh, 60 degrees out in either direction to form a 120 degree arc, correct? Yes, sir. And you state the shaded arc solely indicates the general direction of radio frequency signal, correct? That's correct. Because those edges that you show there, while in the illustration, they seem to be a hard edge. That's kind of theoretical. They're not exactly a hard edge. Is that correct? That's correct. There's no line painted on the concrete that says at this point you're going to switch from this sector to this sector. It's, again, it's kind of fuzzy at the boundaries. It could be 118 degrees. It could be 123 degrees. It could vary. Right, because radio, the radio, even if you have a directional antenna, the radio signals don't just hard cut off at a certain point or necessarily extend exactly to that point, right? That's correct. Okay, we can take that down. Thank you. Um, the other thing is you keep testifying about general location of the mobile devices, the cell phones. Um, but what you're actually talking about, what you actually know, are the antennas that are being hit by the signal from the cell phone, correct? Yeah, we're getting the general area based on the information, meaning the tower and the sector uh, and those antennas in that sector. But again, you don't know where the device is. You just know the antenna that's being uh, used by that cell phone, correct? correct? The other thing is, when you're talking about the cell phone selecting the tower. That's not exactly right, is it? Because don't these cell phone networks, these 3G and 4G cell phone networks, don't they use something called, excuse me, mobile assisted handoff? So yes, they do use the handoff, but that's not at the initiation of the call. So the device, when it's on, scanning the environment, looking for the strongest, clearest signal. The device chooses the tower and sector to use based on the signal strength, the best signal. Once that call is initiated, that tower and sector is put in your records, your CDRs. Hey, this is the tower that Jay's phone picked. Once the phone is in the network uh, and you travel, say I drive from here back to my house, the network is then in charge of any handoffs that are associated with the device. So once you're in the network, as you're driving, the network may say, hey, use the, you, the phone can see this tower and sector, use this one instead, and the device would use that. Again, that's not what's shown in the CDRs. The CDRs is the first tower, the first sector selected by the mobile device. Yeah, and there's a lot of factors that go into that selection, right? I guess we're talking about signal strength, correct? That's one of the criteria, correct. Quality of service? Correct. Would you explain quality of service, please? Yeah, so quality of service is just, is the, sur is the signal a good signal? Or is it you know, reflecting and other things to make it a weaker signal? So again, it's based on signal strength and signal quality. Signal to noise ratio is another factor that's used, correct? That's part of it, correct. Would, would you explain that as well? Yeah, signal to noise ratio is again based on the signal strength. Hey, is how strong is the signal versus other interfering signals in there? So is it a good usable signal? There, again, there's a lot of categories that go into the device, picking the tower and sector to use. So we, we kind of use closest tower as a shorthand, correct? But the reality is there's a lot of factors that go into which particular tower a cell phone is going to use? There are a lot of categories, but in uh, discussions with the providers themselves, signal strength is almost, is one of the largest uh, or biggest choosing factors. Because again, it's based on call quality, right? If we get on a call and it's crappy, we're like, uh, this is awful. I'm going to go to another provider. So the call quality signal strength is the largest thing, which has a lot to do with the closest tower. Again, not always the closest tower. We've said that before, but typically the device chooses the closest tower. Okay, but again, as you said, not always the closest tower, correct? Yeah, because not all towers are created equal, right? We talked about heights of towers, what kind of towers they are, um, which also goes into the play of it as well. Right, and, and when we're talking about tower selection, if we can just continue on that, there are other things that affect what, what tower necessarily may have the best signal strength or what, what, what tower may 
great best for all of these factors combined, right? For example, terrain may play a factor, correct? Terrain plays a factor if there's interference, meaning obviously uh, if you're on the east side of Georgia, they have Stone Mountain. If a tower is on top of Stone Mountain, it's going to have a long, longer, longer range than one that's not on Stone Mountain, right? So again, the line of sight that we discussed. If you're on the other side of Stone Mountain and the tower you use is on the other side of Stone Mountain, then obviously terrain would have an effect because Stone Mountain is in the middle and therefore interrupting the line of sight. And buildings may be a factor in the terrain as well, correct? Buildings can be, but some of the signals used are made to penetrate buildings, so that has a lesser effect than a mountain would have. Right, but you know, weather, um, what else? Uh, maintenance, we discussed maintenance early. So Off weather, oh sorry. You know, you, you, please go ahead. Yeah, weather has less of an effect. Obviously the frequencies chosen have more uh, ability to penetrate weather than, they, than others. So. Call volume also has an effect, correct? Call volume would have an effect on um, the transfer or handoff. Again, most of the time, your phone's going to pick, your phone always is going to pick the tower, the strongest, clearest signal. Um, if you get in a call and say you're at a concert or something like that, you get in uh, a call, your phone chooses the one with the best signal, let's say that's the closest, but that tower is maybe at 90% capacity. The network may tell you, hey, your phone can also see this other tower that's at lower capacity. Move the phone to that tower. But the CDR still reflects the first tower that your phone chose as the strongest, clearest signal. And because you have all of these factors that play in, that is why oftentimes a drive test is the best way to really get an idea of where a cell phone tower or sector covers. Is that correct? Yeah, if you need to get the exact footprint of a cell phone tower, a drive test is the best way to do it. But a lot of times we don't need that in cases. We know that hey, the crime scene's in this location, his residence is in this location, separated by 10 miles, and numerous, numerous towers in the middle. If he's over here and then drives over here, that's good evidence. We may not necessarily need to know exactly the footprint of the tower around his house or the footprint of the tower around the crime scene. What we can say is the phone traveled from the area around a house to the area of the crime scene and then back. So again, it is a great technique to determine the footprint of the tower, um, but we probably do it in... Uh, less than 10% of the cases that we have. But if you want a more exacting idea of the tower coverage, then you would do a drive test, correct? Yeah, the drive test is the best way currently to determine the full footprint of that tower, if that's the information you need. And you'd want to get that drive test in, uh, not necessarily contemporaneous, but as close as possible to the time of the incident you're looking at, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and let's talk about the coverage area of a, of a sector, and then let's I'll be pretty much done at that point. Then we can all have a break. Um, when you're looking at the coverage area for a sector, let's assume it's a 120 degree arc, right? So if you have a cell phone tower with, a, and the ranges vary, right? You've testified that the range of a tower may vary, correct? It does, yeah. Okay. So if you're out, you know, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the country, you might get a cell phone tower with a range of 25 miles, for example, 22 um, miles. I mean, I obviously haven't done analysis in like Nebraska, um, where you would probably have towers farther apart. The most I've seen is about 17 to 18 miles um, in rural parts of Georgia and Alabama. Um, but yeah, uh, towers can reach significantly farther when there's no other towers competing. And, and if, I, if I get this wrong, just stop me and correct me, but I think you've testified today about a lot of towers having in a city environment, such as Atlanta, maybe a two to three mile distance that they might cover, is that correct? I would say it's, if you're talking downtown, um, some of those would have smaller, depending upon the line of sight. Again, where's the antenna? Is it 15 feet off the ground or is it 150 feet off the ground? Well, what about like 150 feet antenna? I think you've testified that there's at least one antenna that has a height like that. What kind of a range would you estimate in your, based on your expertise, would that antenna have? Yeah, again, based on the towers in the area, I'd have to review, but I would say two to, you know, two miles with two to two and a half miles might be an area that we would see. Okay. Again, it would, it depends on the towers in the area, but just to ballpark it, I would say two, two and a half miles. Okay. And if you get one, I, I don't want to turn this into a math test, but if you look at the area that's covered, it's like one third pi r squared, something like that in a 120 degree arc. So if you've got about a three mile distance, you're talking about roughly a nine, eight, nine, ten square mile area that's covered by that uh, sector, correct? Are you talking? You're talking about the total area covered. The total area covered by that sector, if you have a two or three mile uh, radius on that antenna. Yeah, potentially. Again, I, I'm not a, a, a math person for sure. Well, I don't I want um, you to do math. I so again, yeah, if you go out two to two and a half miles plus the arc, that could include eight to nine miles. Again, I, I don't square know, miles. Yeah, I, I'd have to review it, but that doesn't seem too off. Okay, thank you. I don't have any further questions. All right, our 